Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. Today we celebrate the birthday of Rachel Whiteread, the artist who's best known for being the first woman and the youngest artist to win the Turner Prize. She won it in 1993 for a cast she'd made of a full-scale house in Bow. She's well known for her casts, ranging from quite small ones, the inside of a hot water bottle, for example, to large ones like something for the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square. But the exhibition that she has just opened in London has revealed a completely new direction in her art. Uh, there are two main exhibits, um, each of kind of huts um, made of bits and pieces that she's picked up, uh, twisted boughs, bits of corrugated iron, bits of metalwork, planks. Um, and these two constructions look really fragile, almost as if you could you could just blow at them and they and they collapse. And um, in midlife, she's completely altered uh, her approach to her artistic style from these big, solid casts to these much more uh, fragile, vulnerable constructions. I take my hat off to someone who can change course quite as drastically as that um, and do it boldly and confidently because there are times in all our lives when we need to, to do that when things have moved for us both externally and internally in ways that make us feel we should go in a different direction, though we don't always have the courage to do it. The things that seem to have influenced Rachel are both external and internal. She's responded to the, the pandemic, uh, to climate change, to an increasing sense that human beings are not entirely in charge of their destiny, uh, that we are vulnerable to these forces that are seemingly beyond uh, our uh, ultimate control. But also she responded to internal things that are going on privately for her. She uh, uh, has been diagnosed as bipolar and dealing with this, she says, has made her uh, feel more vulnerable, but she's learned how to make that part of her creative activity. I think for all of us as we get on in life and sometimes because of things that happen to us in life become increasingly aware of our vulnerability. Uh, it, it may be because of things going on um, externally. The pandemic has done that for a lot of us. Um, but also uh, it can be things going on in our own private lives or things that happen to us that make us just feel that we are fragile, vulnerable human beings. And we can respond to that either by just giving into it and getting depressed, um, or we can decide to do something creative with these sometimes new feelings that we haven't had before. And so I think today I'm going to encourage myself to think about more ways in which I can deal creatively with the increasing sense of vulnerability that I feel as a, a person growing older. And, and maybe you'd like to think about, even if you're not growing older, there may be other reasons why you um, are aware more than before of being vulnerable. Let's try and do something with these feelings. And uh, if it requires a major change, as it did for Rachel, let's have the courage to do it. But if it's something much smaller, let's delight that we can turn our fragility and our increasing vulnerability into something creative.